Hello, beautiful souls. How are you doing? I'll tell you right now, the, the energies that are coming in to, to the planet and the way that the collective is responding to those energies is bringing up a lot of stuff. So if you have been feeling tossed about in the extreme agitation cycle of your washing machine, you're in good company. So we're going to talk about that today. I think a lot of people uh, at this time, this point in their life are newly awakened. Okay. They're not all like I have been, or maybe how you have been. Um, the It's all by design. So the hope is you feel so physically uncomfortable in the vortex that you have and those beings that are in it and what you're giving your energy to that you're prompted to go within, do some self-reflection and change some things. There's a lot of folks that legitimately believe that a lot of really great, wonderful um, light activations and higher consciousness changes can occur for them. And, and they're not going to change anything about their life. That's not how it works. That's not how it works at all. If you're sitting on the couch, swinging your feet, eating popcorn, watching the movie, that's exactly where you're going to be till hell freezes over. No one comes to save us individually. We are saving ourselves and while we do that it's a process so first of all you got to understand that there's things in our life that have been part of our soul path our soul contract we needed to experience in a certain way to give our soul the expansion it needed to fulfill that criteria met and then continue to ascend that being said if you are existing in that in that space where the karmic relationship is still getting your attention all the time, you're on a negative time loop and you have to change that. How do you know? Well, you got to do some inventory. And the first thing you have to understand is When we go into self-healing, self-compassion, self-love, allowing the space for growth, well, that space occurs because you clear out the shadows. You clear out the junk that has been micromanaging your life and taking all your energy. And that could literally be people, places, and things or a combination of all three. So you have to really go within. This is another big aha moment. We're not going to change our circumstances in our life by expecting other people to change while we do not think. That is a very unreal expectation. That's not how change occurs for you. We don't control other people. Newsflash. We don't control other people. We have no control over other beings, period, exclamation point, end of sentence. So you can sit there all day long, all day long, and wish and hope and pray that things change. And that is not enough because you're not actually putting forth the effort to change. See what I'm saying? So it's unreal in, in, a, in a very superficial way. I believe that through ignorance and through a lack of faith and through uh, fear, people are very unwilling to dip their toe into what is in their highest and best good. Because as a people, we have been steered 
to do everything for everyone else and forget about our own needs, right? Oh, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I myself said when I was working 12 hour shifts till the cows came home and going on very little sleep because I worked night shift and people needed me during the day too. Well, I guess I'll sleep when I'm, I'm dead. How many people are guilty of that mentality? That's the most unhealthy thing we do is we just allow other people's wants and needs for us to run us into the ground. We have nothing left to give to ourselves. So you really do have to start at home and you have to start within yourself. Because even if, like many of us, you're part of a, a core earthly um, family unit, you chose it to provide what you needed for this incarnation, plain and simple. Many of us chose very difficult home lives. Some of us chose high frequency beings to be around us um, just to kind of help support the frequency and the and the growth and the work that needed to be done. Some had to balance karma and have a really, really tough life. Uh, balancing karma of having really wonderful lives. And that's just the way it works. That is soul growth, and soul expansion. But we are intended to recognize the growth, recognize the lesson, give it love, forgiveness, and gratitude, and then move on down the road. You're not meant to stay in any situation, in any situation, with any person, place, or thing that is quite literally sucking the life out of you. And then how do you know that? Well, how do you feel? How do you feel? Do you feel more alive, respected, loved away from home than you do at home because everybody that surrounds you at home just really drains you? Then I, I, I lean toward the fact that everyone around you in your earthly family is not in your highest and best good. And if you are able to remove yourself from them, it's recommended that you do so. And I understand how that sounds. But that's a, that's a matrix construct to stay in a family for the sake of the family. When everyone is dysfunctional and harming you, no, that's called self-abuse. And you're playing an active role in it because you're not doing what you need to do to heal yourself, love yourself, give compassion to yourself and help yourself. If, if your neighbor down the street came to you and said, everyone in my home is attacking me energetically, verbally, physically, taking my money, talking me out of doing things that I know is best for me, but they, they guilt me into doing things for them instead. I bet you would jump to help them. But when you go to the mirror and you have that honest conversation with yourself and you admit to yourself that that exact same thing is happening in your home, are you so excited so ready to jump in and intervene for yourself, to advocate for yourself, to make positive changes that will literally save you. I mean, it's not an easy journey. That's why some souls did not choose to be on the ascension path in this life. It fucking sucks. There are many days that it seems like Two and three weeks have gone by because of all the things that we go through in a single 24-hour period of time, but they're necessary. In the moment, it's really hard to see that it's necessary. I am very guilty of being pissed off and frustrated about the, the lesson I'm having to learn in that moment. And usually within a few hours of being with myself, sitting with that lesson, coming to terms with the energy. I then realize that it was for a very benevolent, very good reason, even though some of the acts that come my way are malevolent, I understand it helps me grow. And I understand it is for the greater good. The more I grow, the more that my frequency rises, the more that I'm able to do good for the collective that ripples through the world that 
ripples through the world. I have seen it. I have felt it. And for those reasons, I continue to go through every single day, putting one foot in front of the other, um, facing the challenges that come my way because this is my mission. I accept it. It's hard. I, I, I don't know how anyone does it completely isolated. And so if you are completely isolated, no one gets you. You have no one to share truth with. You have no one who is even anywhere remotely near having a healthy conversation with you. Please take take the time to join Healing Disclosures on Telegram. It is a completely safe space. The only two requirements are that you have to have a soul and be of the light. And when you're there, we have all been there. We've all started, stopped, been in a part of what you're going through, I assure you. We're all in different stages and levels of this journey, but we certainly remember what it's like whenever we were the only person in our vortex that had a clue, that no one was awake. So if you find yourself there, realize that there are more communities today, whether it's a social space or you physically go out in nature and you see some one other soul person out there soaking up as much good energy as they can in nature, that might be the one. Ask your higher self, am I supposed to talk to them? Are they also as lonely as I am? We need a we need to reach out to one another and realize that we really are the majority. I know it doesn't feel that way because we are bombarded by all the NPC negative AI culture. But we are the majority. We are the majority. I have traveled coast to coast in this country the last couple of years. I have seen so many small towns. I'd never really been on the interstate unless I had to. And there's so much red, white, and blue. There's so much love. There's so much compassion. And there's so much to advocate for in our lives, which brings me to the next point. There's a lot of, and I'm completely guilty of it from time to time. I'm getting better. There's a lot of damning our current dimension, damning our current life and the love affair with fifth dimension, right? So I will tell you my 5D self has the life. She has the life. She, um, she's with all of our family. She's with all the babies. She's had these five D, you know, pregnancies all the time. I'm aware of them, but I'm not there. I'm here. 4D on the way to five. She's there. She has my husband because he passed on. He transitioned in 91 my twin flame. She has my, all my siblings that are there. She has all of my extended family that's there and she's got the goods, right? She's got 5D unity consciousness everywhere. She's, she's swimming with the dolphins and the whales and they're part of our family and the lions. And, and we have an amazing life in the fifth dimension. And we aspire for that in the now moment. And so there's some bleed through, right? I, I, I feel a lot. I sense a lot of the energy from that life. I'm more connected to that life than I am this one in many ways, but this is where I am. This is where my frequency has me in this now moment. And so I learn uh, through time in my own journey, in my own way, while my mission is to spread truth and to help elevate humanity and to help heal humanity so that they can find their way easier and not be such a target for attacks. I also struggle with, you know, um, I want that life. I want that to be the only life that I have conscious awareness of. I don't want to be um, aware of the low vibrational crap that's still around, still existing around me here, which is much, much less. So how do you do that? Well, 
you got to, first of all, get out of the victim mentality. You got to get out of the <clears throat> spewing negative thoughts of hate and despair and don't say Groundhog Day over and over and over again. I was guilty of that too, because that's really negative. What we have to do, and it's very healthy, it's very healing, and it's it's really the best thing you can do for your vibe is to get out in nature and be in spaces that you feel so appreciative of, where you can feel the sun on your face, where you can have the breeze it run through your hair where you can hear the birds singing where you can watch squirrels play like whatever it happens to be um i'm completely blessed in where i currently am and the home that that has been uh made available to me and i have a lot of nature around me all the time yesterday uh, there was a, a black bear in the backyard just sniffing things out and I was within about 20 feet of him. And once I got my dog safe, I just stood there and recorded a little video to share. And we made eye contact a couple of times and he had a bit of a message for me and he was totally great and went on his way. They're deer, they're um, chipmunks and groundhogs all the time. And lots of birds, the birds come and go with the energies. And I'm very, very thankful for that. I now realize that that's such a key part of my, my centering day to day that when I go out and I don't see one of my little furry or feathered friends, it affects me. I'm going, okay, what energy is in the air keeping them away? What's going on? Are there some things around here that need to be taken care of? Wink, wink. So it's, it's, it's definitely been a transformation where I no longer wake up every day and go, fuck, I'm still here. Are you guilty of that? I'm totally guilty of that. I, I've grown out of that. I've gotten beyond that, but I have my moments. We're human after all. <laughs> we have lots of other lineages, but in this now moment, we're human. And we deal with things the best way we know how. So understanding that wanting the absolute best for yourself and your neighbor, that's unity consciousness. Not being jealous of your neighbor, not being jealous of your 5D self. I have found myself there like, damn, she has got the life. And I don't yet. <laughs> and so... I've had to work through that. That is more shadow work. Shadow work is not a checklist. Shadow work is a journey. And you have to go every single day and go, well, some more layers have been exposed. And that's the that's the thing with the energies. So the more CMEs come in and the more galactic energies come in, there are more activating energies that come in. It's also a reflection of our energy. What energy are you putting out there? Are you doing a lot of releasing? Are you letting go? Are you decluttering? Are you really taking an unbiased, neutral look at your vortex, at your life, the people that you've invited into it and go, okay, what do they actually bring to me, to my energy? What do I feel from them? And, and really write it down, like put down the pros and the cons. If you are always giving, giving, giving to these folks and they never have time for you when you actually have a need or all they do is flip it back around on them, they're not in your highest and best good. Ask your higher self. It's the tide has to turn and it happens within you. I can't do it for you. Um, you're, you're preacher can't do it for you your mom can't do it for you your children can't do it for you when you decide your bodies mental body spiritual body physical body energy body light body emotional body when all those bodies are cringing because you have co-created a vortex of energy vampires a vortex of witches, of NPCs and organic portals. And you're wondering why you feel like shit all the time. You have to take a stand. 
You have to take a stand. That was the message from the bear yesterday. Stand your ground like you would with me. Because as they come and they will come, source and the kingdoms are behind you, standing your ground and speaking your truth. That is the message. Stand your ground and speak your truth. Well, I can tell you from working with hundreds of people, you don't even know your truth right now because it has been sucked out of you. You have no energy to do the shadow work. Meditation for you is a joke because you can never detach from all the text messages and phone calls and, and demands that you have set in place for other people to put on you, you've made it okay. So you have to change. You have to change some things. You have to go within. You have to distance yourself from these people, places, and things, whatever that looks like. Okay. If it's your job, look for another job. If it is your spouse, Really look at that. Is this a karmic? Am I always entangled with this person in in uh, this? He said, she said, we're never on common ground. Because if that's the case, they're there to make you grow and elevate you up and out of that relationship. Karmic relationships are not meant to be with you for the long haul, meaning not soul mates, not twin flames, not even a divine relationship. It is not blessed by source. It is in your life because you soul contracted to be with a narcissist. Who did that? Yeah, I did that. I did that. I did that. Man, when I realized it, I was like Sheldon Cooper throwing the, <laughs> the lease agreement in the air. Like who agreed to that? I did. And many of us did. And that's okay. Because when you sit back and you go, okay, so that's why all that stuff happened for me. So now I got to pick up my toys, gather the goods and move on down the road or have them move on down the road. I mean, either way, you're energetically taking what you, what you have gathered from that event, the good things, and you're letting go of the baggage and you are loving and forgiving and giving gratitude for the moment and all parties involved in that event, and you move down the energetic journey of ascension. And it's hard. But understanding that loving yourself and giving yourself the time to heal and be compassionate to yourself like you are to so many others, it's really, really important. And you won't know what makes you happy. You won't know what is your calling until you Spend enough time with yourself to get to know yourself, to really understand who you are without all these other beings pulling at you and taking from you and draining you. And that is part of the plan. That is part of the plan. All I knew was I had to keep going to work. Uh, my entire life was falling around around me, just crumbling fires here and disasters here, literally. And all I kept saying was, I got to keep going to work. I got to keep going to work. I got to keep going to work. There was nothing that I would ever put before work. Not my kids, not myself, nothing. And they loved it. They took advantage of that right and left. And I suffered, suffered, and I suffered, and I suffered. And then I thought, do I actually have a say in this? you damn right I did. And when I realized that it's like, a, once you verbalize it, the cat's out the bag, right? The genie's out the bottle. Well, then I realized that I had been playing a major role and harming myself. So then you got to love yourself. You got to forgive yourself. You got to give gratitude for even recognizing the truth. And then don't go back. Grow, take it down the road, and don't go back to bad habits. Let go 
of the non-serving ways. You guys check out my letting go series. It's, it's golden. Okay. You've got so many things that you, people say, great. Tell me I have to do shadow work, but tell me where to start. Well, that's not for me to do. I can tell you how to go about some things, but your triggers tell you where you need to do shadow work. They are pinpoints on the map of your soul going, yeah, me, I need some help over here. I need some healing. I hurt and I'm hurting so bad that I make you feel this way every time something comes up. That's how you know what you have shadow work to do. Because again, we only control ourselves. We have no control over what other beings do. We only control the reaction to other beings' actions. Now, you can completely remove yourself from those that are constantly harming you. That's a great action. Because you don't, none of us are meant to be harmed long-term. Some of us soul contract these harms. Some of us soul contract lots of trauma in one life so that we feel completely targeted. But you are never alone. You always have your angels, your archangels. You always have source. You always have your team. Your team is just waiting on you to realize it, to stop playing the victim, to stop acting like you're helpless because you're not. We have born rights born with abilities to be sovereign and to be authentic but man we are brainwashed out of that aren't we you're gonna listen to what i say i'm your mom you're gonna do what i say or i'm gonna whip your ass who was raised like that yeah and you know you go to school and that's enforced reinforced and You see that those that don't conform, they have it rough, right? And I used to be judgmental of those folks. And now I'm sitting here at 51 thinking, I think I should have been a rebel. (laughs) Could have started this long time ago, but it wasn't my time. I had to endure and experience all the things that I had soul contracted in my soul path. And so I say that lovingly. Okay, because it is all for a purpose, a really, really good purpose. And I give thanks for that. When when you are on this journey and you do ascend, and we are ascending all the time. Okay. We're we are, even as a collective culture of those with their the feet in the ground, they're not really doing a whole lot of work. Um, there is an ability to rise in frequency without consciously knowing it and so there's been a huge rise in the collective consciousness and that has helped others awaken and that has helped some that heard our mustard seeds many years ago go hmm maybe she's not crazy (laughs) maybe they were on to something i don't know but i do I I do honestly invite you to check out VioletLotusEnergy.com. We have a lot of the services that can just help you take your power back, get clear, get your activations, heal your inner child, deal with PTSD. Um, We can help you clear your land and your home. We can help your pets. We, we, there's a, there was a pet that, that is, um, was seeing, one of our staff members for frequency for healing for pain but the vet wanted to do a really really expensive acl repair because there was a lameness in the leg well i looked at the pet and there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of implants negative implants negative entities all sorts of stuff she needed a qet session which i gave her and within a day or two she was running around doing everything fun And she has to be maintained. She has to be cleared because she's absorbing all this energy from her owners and the people around her. Cause that's what our pets do. That's why our pets are so sickly because they absorb all of our trauma and they absorb a lot of our, of our uh, negative energy to help us get through. So yeah, take a look. You are not alone. We have communities that you can join. You can, you can be a spectator. You can slowly dip your toe into that 
speaking your truth thing. It's really liberating. It does a lot of good for your, your energy body to heal in that way, to, to have your moment of authenticity and not be afraid of getting your hand slapped, um, to have your moment of sovereignty. Like, this is who I am. This is what I was meant to do. I'm so happy. You know, even if it's for five seconds, because it will build, it will build, it will build. And then you'll find yourself in a different vortex because those that are not meant to be with you will fall away because your frequency and your light will make you them so uncomfortable. It's not worth them trying to get your energy anymore. And then all of a sudden you'll start to attract your frequency, your vibe attracts your tribe and you'll have new people come into your life. You may connect with someone you never connected with before because you were a frequency mismatch to them. And then all of a sudden you're, you're on the same level and you're like, this is awesome. It's not a journey for the faint of heart. It is work, but it is worth it. It is worth it. I hope this message has found you well today. Have a blessed one and I'll see you again next time.